There's an area in South Louisiana that's west of New Orleans, where I'm from, and uh, <clears throat> really didn't know a lot about it, although my ancient ancestors, I'd say back in the 1700s, immigrated from Pennsylvania over to South Louisiana in that country. But they were of uh, German and English descent, and <clears throat> the people that came there about the same time uh, that were very poor and were farmers and hunters uh, from Nova Scotia. The French people that came there originally first came to New Orleans, and the high-class French people that in New Orleans rejected them, didn't want anything to do with them, and so they moved on over to where my relatives lived, uh, in that area, Bayou Teche, Lafayette, <clears throat> and then you had Bro Bridge, uh, New Iberia, and th those areas of South Louisiana that are known uh, to be the cradle of the Cajuns. Um, the Cajuns, and you can see them, um, some of them, uh, their descendants on swamp people on TV. Of course, not all of them live like that. You'll remember um, um, the quarterback for the Panthers. Um, shoot, I can't even remember his name now. Anyway, he was, he's from South Louisiana. He's at the University of Southern, uh, th Southwestern Louisiana in Lafayette. So there's a, a thriving French uh, community down there. Now the Cajuns uh, <clears throat> were known for their music, uh, dance music, uh, lighthearted, and the book talks about People like um, fiddlers like Dennis McGee, Dewey Balfa, and Michael Doucette. Now, I've heard of these people. I'm not terribly familiar with Cajun music. It's rural. It's folk music. And it is an ethnic music that's gotten quite a bit of a following the last, you know, however, half a century or so. But recently, the book says uh, groups such as Beaujolais, who, by the way, Michael Doucette is the, uh, the leader, the, the violinist, or the fiddler, groups such as Beaujolais have helped bring back a spirit of traditional Cajun music. The sound and language are unique, and the music is lighthearted and zesty. It's good dance music. I had a friend that used to go uh, to the University of Southwest Lafayette. Well, he went for a semester or two, and, and then just lived over there, and he used to go out. In fact, the people down there loved to go out and party. They love to dance, and Cajun music provides just that. Now, we're going to hear an example of black Cajun music, since there are black people who live in southwestern Louisiana, as well as all throughout the south. These people picked up on the French uh, music, the French culture, and adapted it for their own purposes, and that's known as Zydeco, uh, Z-Y-D-E-C-O. And Zydeco is a, is a mixture of Cajun it has the same kind of beat, the same kind of shuffle beat, uh, and the same language patois of French dialect. And by the way, you can drive through that, that area of the country even now and listen to the radio and find stations that you don't understand a word they're saying because they're, they're speaking in that French patois that even French people from France can't understand. That's kind of interesting, I think. Um, Clifton Chenier, uh, and the example that we have comes from... Um, 60 Minutes with the, the King of Zydeco, which was released in 1986, but this track um, is called Tout le temps sans temps, and I've tried to find out what that means, but I haven't been successful so far. So if anybody can figure out what that means, um, any French-speaking people around that want to want to let us know what that means. We're going to hear, really, 12-bar phrases. This is almost like Little Richard. You'll, you'll recognize right away the, the shouting quality of the black influence. Uh, of rock and roll, Little Richard. Let's uh, let's hear just a little bit of that, real quick. <clears throat> Miss Molly. You see the similarity there? 
And you also hear the blues progression. Well, you could just transfer that over to the washboard here, which has metal brackets that go across the shoulders here, and you wear like a vest. The washboard, and you hear that along with the drummer keeping the rhythm, and you play it like this. They wear little thimbles on their finger, and it keeps a nice beat. Of course, the most important instrument is what? Besides the singing, the accordion. And the accordion, according to the book, was added later. We don't hear any fiddle in this. Fiddle is really the, the determining factor, of course, in, in dance music. And when you listen to dance music of uh, chapter three, folk music, uh, Gid Tanner and the Skillet Lickers, remember that one, Soldier's Joy? That was fiddle music. In fact, I think they had two fiddles in that. Well, this is dance music without the fiddle, although the fiddle was a prominent Cajun instrument, as we just read. <clears throat> so, Cajun zydeco is a combination of Cajun music and the blues, and you can hear that there. We're going to go on to our last example in uh, Chapter 7, Para Pajaro Campagna. I think that's probably how you say it. This is Sergio Cuevas of Paraguay. And this is Latin American folk music. Now, Latin American folk music is where they, instru they, they introduce new instruments. Where, where they're actually old as, as can be, but the instruments are categorized, not like the strings of the orchestras your, your, uh, your assignment was in, in Chapter 2, but categorized more uh, in terms of how you play them or what they're made out of. So first thing on the list is you have the wind instruments, the aerophones. Let's go ahead and write these down for you so you can see this. I should have written them earlier. Now what would you think aerophones would be? Wind instruments, I already said that. Okay, then idiophones. I don't know how you spell that. How do you spell that? Is that right? Yeah. Idiophones. Those are instruments that are uh, made up of themselves. They sound like what they're made of. For instance, drums, rattles, shakers, bells. Idiophones are like percussion instruments. And then, finally, chordophones. Wind instruments, percussion instruments, stringed instruments like guitars or harps, any kind of uh, viol that's bowed or plucked. And so we'll hear some of these instruments in this example. For one thing, Let's make sure that we understand this music, as I said before. This is the music of the mestizos, who are, are folk, uh, or rural folk from South America, make up the majority of the population. And the majority of the population would be uh, a mixture of the Indian, the indigenous people that lived in South America, and originally, I guess you could say Aztec, Mayan, uh, the um, Incas, and other groups of Indians, and really they're still really discovering tribes and Indians and um, 
people that live in the Amazon isolated. So these people uh, were there before Columbus came, before the Spanish conquistadors arrived, uh, to pretty much take over. So that's a whole other story of history, but when the Spanish conquistadors came, what was their purpose? Their purpose was, number one, gold, riches. And if there was gold to be found, they were going to find it. Uh, <clears throat> their other purpose, of course, to colonize for uh, you know, merchandise and for crops and for all types of uh, goods that they could uh, export or import, export from uh, South America into other places, you know, uh, all, all sorts of uh, food items and uh, those, those type of resources. Another thing, they said this was their number one reason. I have a feeling that, uh, that gold was number one. Uh, it's pretty obvious, but Christianity, to convert uh, the heathen, uh, the Indian population to Christianity. That's why you have such a strong uh, Catholic uh, presence in South America and in Mexico. Not very much Protestant. Uh, that was in North America. But the, uh, the Catholic presence in South America and Central America is undisputable and you had many of these mestizos that uh, were educated in monasteries or educated by these missions that would be uh, dotting the landscape. It's been a long, many centuries of assimilating the European style from the indigenous style. Well, you still hear uh, in this music, this folk music, the uh, indigenous style of the mestizos. Harmonies are European in style with prevalent tonic and dominant chords. Music is simple and repetitive, but differing. Simple lines can be combined to create more complex texture. Chromaticin is not there. It's, it's very uncommon. The chromaticin would be the black and white notes of the piano, uh, rather than just the white notes as in do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. If you go do, re, do, re, do, da, 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 all the notes in between are chromatic notes. There's no improvisation, there's little or no improvisation or freedom melodic and rhythmic interpretation in native Hispanic music, except in salsa and jazz, in Latin jazz, which would of course be bossa nova. Uh, one of the styles. However, improvisation and freedom add personal interpretation to a melody are common in Afro-Hispanic Afro -Hispanic music. Phrases are often clear and regular. Tonality, for the most part, is major or minor. Rhythm is usually regular, syncopated, and percussive. So let's listen, first of all, to the rhythm of this piece. I think it starts out with a, again, we hear a harp. Yeah. Ah, let me just stop here. I remember this song. You have this note. And then it goes down. And of course, in between those two notes, you hear this note. Then it goes down. That's the whole structure of the piece because what happens here is you have a, a tonic chord. And then a dominant chord. Do you hear the difference? Tonic. Play them all together or one at a time. Those are the notes in the chord. And then you go to the different chord. And it all starts in the very beginning of this piece. Listen. It's faster. Faster. <laughs> 